Hey guys, how you doing? Ron Zanut here. Um, today I've got a, a trying to help somebody out. I have a friend that has a uh, computer that he believes is dead, and uh, he wants to get some pictures and files off the computer. Now, of course, the number one rule is to always back up your system, but those of us that don't tend to do that sometimes this happens. So this is an older computer. It's a Dell uh, Dimension 3200, and uh, it appears to have a kind of BIOS or it's got some kind of problem. Now, the most important thing right now is to get his data off of it. So what we want to do, I'm going to try to uh, show you how I do that and the tools that I need to do that. So um, you'll see the power switch in the front. And then over here, I have a test set up for uh, see if we're going to get, see what we get on the screen. So I'm going to plug in, plugging in the system. And now I'm going to turn it on. See, now we're getting uh, error code beeps. So, uh, so we're not going to have any luck in getting uh, the system to come up um, and uh, be able to get the files off of it. So truly, there's a problem. So now the next thing we want to do is we want to uh, open up the unit and get the hard drive out of it, and then connect it to another computer system, so that. Uh, we can uh, hopefully recover the drives if there's not a, a problem with it. So now this Dell happens to open up like a clamshell. And uh, hopefully you can see inside there. You can see right there are the hard drives. There's actually two in this one here. Now um, there's also the optical drive. And I think there's maybe a floppy in there. But this is what we want to get to. So, uh, so what I'm going to do is um, disconnect um, the drives. I'll disconnect uh, one at a time, and uh, we'll uh, remove it. It looks like uh, Dell has some nice remove, some green, easy removable drive trays, and I can pull them out. And so let me do that, and then uh, take it from there. Okay, um, those are simple to remove out of a, a Dell unit. You know, when you have these guys inside of the system all you got to do is uh, squeeze these two tabs and the drive comes out so uh, this system as I said had two hard drives this is a Mac store uh, 80 gigabyte parallel ATA so it's got a IDE interface as so the older type drives have this interface and then it also had a, a data drive which is a uh, Western digital 320 gigabyte drive and again easy to remove uh, slides right out with these brackets on there and again same kind of thing it has the same kind of interface now in order to um, get hopefully get data off these drives if they're not uh, damaged you need number one another computer system in order to be able to uh, connect these two um, and then the key things that you need to use what I use is um, this is a uh, product called an easy connect King Wim makes it uh, Rosewell a whole bunch of companies make it but basically this is an interface that allows you to plug in um, these uh, th in this particular case it allows you to plug in both a SATA drive and or an IED, IDE drive okay so it allows you to plug that in to a computer and then connecting it to a, your USB port allows you to see it as a separate drive so I'll show you here exactly what comes in the box um, there's a battery pack which is uh, important because you need battery for your drive so that's really what we have here and then that's a four pin power connector that plugs into your four pin port right here on your hard drive and then um, the key piece here is this interface here it shows you actually on it that it has um, a three and a half inch IDE it also has a two and a half inch IDE I don't know if you can see that port here okay and then it also has a SATA port on the end. Okay, so depending on the drive. Now, what I'm going to do is uh, connect it up to a system, and I'm going to connect it right into the three and a half inch IDE port there. Going to also connect in the power connector right there. Okay, so you have connected up power 
and then the uh, the interface and then this cable right here comes with this is the USB cable that's going to plug into my my other computer okay so uh, we're gonna plug this in power up the system and hopefully if this drive is not uh, destroyed or it got corrupted when the system died we'll be able to see data on it and then be able to copy it off on a USB or a DVD so uh, let's do that and we'll do the same thing for the other drive and uh, one of the things to, to note though is this is an IDE drive so you know this is an older style so this is excellent uh, uh, device to use uh, one of the things that is a beauty nowadays with SATA is to have a uh, if you had a SATA drive which is a drive that has you know uh, these uh, interface connections right here the longer is the data one and the little ones the uh, uh, the longer one is the power and the little ones the data um, these uh, docking stations you just put right in and then same thing you, you connect the power to the wall and then you plug it in a USB uh, and these things are great and actually this one there is a dual one where you actually could copy so if you had uh, you had another backup drive you can just copy it right to that drive all within this so um, and these only cost about 25 bucks maybe a little bit more and then this uh, Kingwin interface this was only about I think twenty dollars from Micro Center. I'm sure you can get them on Newegg. So uh, anyway, let's uh, connect it up to a system and uh, see if we can uh, get data off of this it. Is to connect it up, so I have here the USB port, and I'm plugging it into the USB port on my test station. Okay, and actually you can see since even though the system is not turned on, there is power to it. It actually um, lit up, showed that the interface. There's a signal power coming to to that portion of it now for the hard drive to be powered up you also need to have um, some power to that and to do that we have this power brick connected to the power connection there all right so I showed you before and then what I got to do here is connect up this into um, into the power pack. Now I have the other end of this is connected to a power strip. Uh, the other end is connected to a power strip behind my test station. I'm not going to show you that. So now I'm plugging this in and this hard drive actually has power now and if you can hear it's actually spinning up. So now what I'm going to do is turn on my, my uh, test station power switch that's a reset switch and uh, so let me boot it up and uh, we'll see if uh, the system comes up and recognizes it and again right now what you're seeing here is you may see some activity. And there's also a little read write indicator on that. Uh, there's power, and then next to it is a WR. That's not flashing yet, but the system hasn't uh, come all the way up yet. So let's see what we got. <coughs> I am a New York Giants fan. Well, I should say world champion New York Giants. All right. So let's see. A vast virus database has been updated. We're going to now take a look and see uh, if we have, um, if the drive is recognized at all. So let's see if I can make this bigger. Zoom you into that. Okay, right now it just shows two disks. It shows my main disk and my data disk. So this drive is not coming up on the system here. I'm going to unplug the USB and I'm going to plug it back in and see if that does anything. 
it says it's installing and it actually recognizes it now so I did plug it in oh here we go open folder so uh, power came up with the system and I unplugged the USB port and plugged it back in and now I have a local disk let's see if you can see that yep local disk and let's see what we have on there there we go so uh, this was a, a Windows Millennium Edition this is an older system now the key things we want to get out of this is their data file so I have a documents and settings folder here that I can get to here's uh, all users shared documents and uh, there was on the so underneath the all users on this particular one here's a user we're gonna have access to it trying to get access to the user folder Now remember there were two disks in this computer so the other disk is the operating system disk. The other one may be the one that has all of the data files on it. Of course this has a folder on it. So it's a drive and it does have a user account. <coughs> so we'll see. It looks like it's still uh, searching this drive. And actually if you look now you'll see the read write um, LED is flashing because it is reading off the drive, off of that drive. All right, it looks like we're nearing the end of its search, and we have some uh, some files that it opened up. Here's my documents, and it looks like. Um, there's all kinds of uh, files on here so there's m maybe let's see pictures is definitely one there we go here's some pictures okay so uh, we're gonna back that out for them so that's how you get to the drive now I'll do that again on the other one but while I have this one up I'm gonna take a moment and back it up okay so I was able to get uh, the data off of the uh, this disk basically got uh, Four DVDs worth, about 16 gigabytes of uh, data. It's just connected using the uh, the Kingwin interface, and I was able to get uh, all the data. This drive is the boot drive for that system, and the Documents and Settings folder has all the information. So this worked just fine here. I plug in the uh, the other drive same way so I'm going to connect up to the IDE port here the, um, the data connection All right. and then plug in the power and it doesn't feel like what is happening So these are connected up in the same way as the other one. Data and power. And now I'm going to connect up the uh, USB port. And let's see what happens on the system here. Okay, there's an indication that it recognizes the USB connection. And let's see. Uh, we don't, uh, it does not show another disk drive other than the ones I already have connected. And what we'll do then is go to um, disk management. So, um, what I'm doing here now is going using the Windows 
7 function to look at the disks that are connected to the system. And let's see what we get. Alright, so it recognizes there's a drive that needs to be initialized. Now, I tried this uh, before. It says the device is not ready. So that hard drive uh, was damaged whenever that system died. That drive is just not uh, good. Um, there might be another system I could try it on, but I've done the exact same thing as I did with the the uh, operating system drive and uh, that came up just fine. Worst case if the drive was good and there was nothing on it I would have to initialize it but <clears throat> as you can see here it says disk 2 unknown and uh, even if I look on properties properties says the device is working so it's connected but it doesn't recognize the size of the drive and the drive it actually itself is a 320 uh, gigabyte drive so um, so we got a problem, that hard drive is bad. But at least now you know that um, you can recover data <clears throat> um, assuming that you don't have a catastrophic failure of the system that takes out the drives or a power problem. And you saw on this one I had uh, one drive that was just fine and I was able to retrieve data off of it. The other one looks like that one uh, uh, was bad. So I hope that helps. If you have any questions uh, let me know. Post a comment and I'll do my best to get back to you. And I uh, hope you like uh, these kinds of videos. Um, like and favorite if you're so inclined. That's it from Ron's and Nuts. Thanks.